So that's like, I guess that brings us to where you're at now where you're just kind of running through it. How did like COVID alter things for your life? Did it like create disruptions with the, cause you work in the schools. Did you start doing it like remotely and things like that? Yeah. COVID definitely, you know, turned everything upside down. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of work, we, we, we were able, able to pivot well, thank God. And, and, kind of end up doing a lot of virtual, um, uh, I guess, programming. And like we did, you know, we did a lot of what we were doing in person online during COVID, which, you know, is not preferable, obviously, for obvious reasons, but um, but we we made it through. Um, and so we got back to in person. And even still now, obviously, when things jump off, you got to go back virtual, you know, at least we have, um, we have a system in place to be able to do that. Um, and then for us, really, the, was uh, in the house because, you know, my kids' school was closed. So my wife and my kids and I, we was in the crib. But, I, you know, it, obviously it was a super hard time for the world. And But we, I, I enjoyed being around my wife and kids and being able to write rhymes. Hey, and just, shouts you know, to that. For real, because, I, yeah. like, I'm, that's a rarity. Like, I'm one of the only people that I know that says that, that I'm like, yo, like most people are like, I was just um, participating in a in a clubhouse conversation, and one of the homies was just like super big on like, yo, yeah, like COVID proved that like relationships are sham, and like what? nobody can like be in a happy relationship. And I'm like, no, how the fuck did it prove that? Like, who are you talking to? Where's your where's your gauge? I'm like, I'm right here, literally, <laughs> super happy. Like, if anything. Like it was an improvement. Like it, it bettered things. Like what? Like yeah. so. It, it's it like it shouts to all of us that like it wasn't taxing and that it was like a, a blessing. Yeah, it was a blessing, refreshing to be around them, and um, and they're writing a lot of rhymes, man. That I um, even, I'm still now trying to figure out how to like package and 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 share with the world because. What I what I was doing was um uh I saw my man Phase One. I don't know if y'all know Phase One, but uh he's a rapper, he's super dope. He um he did this video like right at the beginning when everything got shut down. Um and he did this video online of him basically performing remotely. So like we are on Zoom, it, it was musicians in different boxes and he was he was rapping. And I was like, yo, that's dope, man. And I um I tried it with my friends. I was like, yo, let's try some. And it wasn't working. I was like, man, what are we doing? So I ended up calling phase one. I'm like, yo, what did you do? How did you do that? And he's so gracious. You know, he had me on the phone for like an hour and 30 minutes explaining his process. Um, and so I was like, bet. And so I ended up uh, doing my version of that, which was different. Um, but I took a lot of gems from what he was explaining to me. And what I did was um, I called it at the time the quarantine jam, right? Because it was total lockdown. Um, and what I did was um, it's on like IG and YouTube and stuff. But I, I'm in the process of figuring out how to redistribute it. But I would um, uh, ask a, a musician friend of mine, just one, not a whole band, just one, um, to send me like 60 seconds of them playing their instrument, like a loop on guitar. And each one was a different instrument. So there's, there's one featuring a guitarist, there's one featuring a bassist, there's one featuring a pianist, there's one featuring um, uh, uh, a, a drummer on a kit, there's one featuring a drummer on the djembe. Like each one is a different instrument, different musician. And I would take them, a video of them doing their thing, and then I would write. And it be in, in this season, it was like, it was super dope. Like I would write it and record it, everything in that after that afternoon. So they would send it to me. We were all home, my kids, my wife, and I'd be at the kitchen table and I would I would write a rhyme and then film myself, you know, performing it kind of like a music video to the um to the instrumentation and put it out. Um but it's like I think it's like 15 videos. Um and it's there's just so much because of what was going on in the world and what was going on in in inside of you know me, you know, personally. I just feel like there was so much depth in, in those creations. Um, and we kind of just let them fly like uh, 
you know, social media thing. But in hindsight, coming out of it later, I'm like, yo, we should really. So what I ended up doing was, um, uh, or what I'm in the process of doing is kind of making like a mini documentary out of it. Okay. Where, yeah, you have uh, the the actual performance videos, but I also had all the people that I worked with um, uh, film like little, uh, you know, themselves talking about their experience. So there's also some just some some uh, dialogue. So saying, yo, I, my, I had a son during this. My son was born and, you know what I mean? Different experiences. This mm -hmm. kid, college, like, yo, I had to graduate on Zoom. And so people talking about, these musicians talking about their experience, and then you get to yeah, see man. us performing it. Um, so uh, so that was like, uh, you know, during COVID, that's what we were working on. And um, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to, to repackage it and put it out, but Hopefully this year that gets done. Yeah, that's super creative. I like the way that you're able to like work through all the circumstances and just make it your own unique blend on it, right? Like it's not just regular. Like everything you've described is like we did it and then we did it one up and went in that direction with it and mm -hmm. came up with something that other people aren't necessarily doing. And I like that. Yeah. Thank you, man. I mean, go ahead. I was going to ask, how did you, you uh, connect with the Vice Versus Foundation and get involved with that? Because that ultimately is how we ended up in this specific conversation. Yeah, shout out to Vice Versus um, and the foundation. Um, so I was familiar with EO from like way, yes, from way back in the day. Um, like I had mentioned when I was, you know, much younger and my, my, my mentor saying, yo, you got to come rhyme here. Um, and like Vice and Zoo and all them shouting at me while I'm on stage, shouting over me and everything. Um, that whole culture was crazy. It was intense. Um, so like I was familiar with, with their camp and, and what they do. Um, but I was for many years in, in another lane, right? Like I described, I was, I was doing the soul, hip hop, trio, live musician, vibe for a long time and then how did i end up oh so my man oliver y'all know oliver uh yeah. who's from canada is down olivier. with wait oh you talking about oliver olivier, bro? olivier yes wait which one yes yeah i i don't know his last name but um what's his last name he's 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 eo dub through and through um but he he he's been my man for a lot of years and um, he he came and he visited me and we were uh, we were having lunch or something. I forget how it came up, but he was the one who brought it to my attention. He was like, "Yo, you should do the um, you should do the MC challenge." And I was like, ah, "I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that." Um, but um, he was like, "Nah, you should really you should really consider it." And I was like, "All right, for you I will because I, I really uh, you know love this brother." So I came home, I told my wife, I was like, yo, babe, they're doing this MC challenge. My man told me I should, I should get down. And um, she was like, all right, go for it. So um, it, that, whole, that whole story was wild. So I guess this is like two years ago. Um, that story was wild. Because up until the last minute, I, w I wasn't committed to do it, right? I was like, nah, I don't know you know, if I want to do it. Um, it had been a long time since I was in a very competitive space as an MC, right? Because like I mentioned, all those other spaces I just described, it's a totally different vibe, right? Um, playing shows, rocking with the band, playing on the train. It's not competitive. It's not competing with other MCs. That that energy, that aggression is not there. Um, so it had been a long time. I was like, I don't know if I want to jump into that. Long story short, I realized it was too late. They already had all the contestants. I was like, oh, snap. But they, um, what do you call it? The wild card thing. And so I, I just showed up. I think I, I, I hit somebody on IG. It was like, yo, if I show up, can I get on? And it was like, um, yeah, you, you could probably get on as a wild card. And so I just showed up one night and I just put my name on the list. Um, and it was, we just started getting busy that, that night. It, um, uh, what I take? I think I took second place that night. And so I took second place. My man was there with me and he, everybody was hyped. Like, yo, you know, you killed it. You should you should continue. And so you know how the MC Challenge works. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah but we so, should explain you know, it anyway just in case somebody doesn't know how it works. 
Okay, so if dependent, like if you're winning, you advance, and and the competition gets increasingly more difficult as you advance. And so, being that I took second place, that won me uh, a, a spot as a, I guess, a wild card in the next competition, right? And so I go to the next joint, and end up taking first place. Um, and the MC challenge, for those of you guys who don't know, a lot of people say is like the uh, greatest test of the MC. You know, the greatest, like, uh, you know, of, a, of the whole MC. Um, you got to, you know, you got to freestyle, pull things out of a bag. You got to, like, you know, try to uh, stay on. You know, the DJ tries to throw you off playing different beats. You have to do different things. And you have judges, um, you know, uh, scoring your performance. It's super, super uh, difficult um, and fun. So I'm like, all right. So the next one I go and I end up taking... Um, uh, first place and all the while um, vice versus was like uh, just incredible and like you know y'all y'all know like just the energy like just putting a battery in my back I'm like yo this dude is amazing like you know the human uh, battery yeah and so I, I was just feeling the love and the energy and I remember actually that night that I took first place when I showed up um, and remind you, like I said, I wasn't plugged in for all this time. So a lot of the people that were there all um, knew each other, right? The contestants knew each other, the judges, everybody knew each other. I didn't know too many people that were there. But Vice had, uh, he had saw me in the last joint. And then when I went to the next one, um, him and Pro was there and Pro was like, oh, this, 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 the, this the brother you was telling me about? And that just, that just like brought me mad joy. Like, yo, Vice was over here telling him that this dude is coming through. That brought me a lot of joy. Like, man, that's that's honorable, right? So anyway, um, you know, did that. And then I, I, you know, I made it all the way to the the challenge of champions. Um, and um, and that was a blast. And we did that. And I took third place in that. Um, and it was it was just a lot of fun. So that's how I got plugged uh back in with the EO Duff oh. and 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 everybody, um, and the challenge of champions was 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 beautiful too. And uh, all of this, like I like I mentioned earlier, I'm a student, right? I'm a student. Um, you know, I'm a student, and um, I've been looking at this every day when I come down in my book uh, in my my space. This is um uh, uh, Justin Bull, the artist, right? You guys have seen his stuff, and so the the last page here, he has this quote and this picture, and it says um it says I am still learning. And the quote is by Michelangelo at age 87. And so every day I look at it, I'm like, wow, that's dope. Like I'm still learning. So when I went to the MC Challenge of Champions, I was a student, I was learning. Um, and you know, it was it was such a great experience and, and, and it uh, taught me a lot. Watching how the other people did their thing, you know, shout out to um, uh, Osiris Anthem and Rabbi Darkside, you know, Osiris took first, uh, Rabbi took second. I took third. Um, so I learned a lot, man. It was super dope. And that's how I got connected with them. And then the last time, or reconnected with them, the last time I actually saw Vice was uh, a, a while after that competition. Um, uh, they had put together this um, this event um, with an organization called Graffiti Kids, which I believe Pro is, is, is a part of running, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it was basically... Uh, um, teaching young people all the elements of hip-hop, emceeing, DJing, breaking, graffiti. It was like a one-day event, and they invited me to, to, to be a part of the, the MCs who, who taught, you know, uh, the art of emceeing. So it was me, Vice, uh, Osiris, Anthem, uh, Zoo, and, um, and, and Baxter. And, and we were teaching young people as little as, like, little kids that were, like, second, third grade. Um, and then also older, like teenagers, how to rhyme. And that was the last time I saw um, Vice, and that was um, that was that was really meaningful for me, you know. Especially coming full circle, like as I explained, working in schools, working with young people, then going to the MC Challenge, was which was another lane, having to tap into that, um, compete, um, and then and then be able to lock arms with these brothers and do this youth work. Like for me, it was like, yo, this was this was amazing. So. Yeah, that was the that was how I got reconnected with the. That's dope. The, and so you ended up winning the grant from the 
the foundation. Yeah. Yep. So then I guess after that, I don't know, maybe a year after or something like that, um, I heard they were doing, uh, the foundation was doing grants and everything. Um, and it's funny because I saw in the, in the, um, in the language of it that, uh, that it was, it was, it was geared toward artists, like not teaching artists, but artists, right. And a grant that would help kind of, um, accelerate your career and your work and everything. Um, but I was like, man, I think, especially being that the last time I saw Vice, we were teaching the young people, the art of them seeing together. Okay. I was like, I think it makes sense for me to apply anyway, as a teaching artist and, and share, you know, uh, about the program, the rhyme program, rhymes help young minds excel. And so I did that and they were gracious and they brought me on again, at my, my history of being a wild card. I was like the wild card, um, uh, grant winner. Cause I, I, it was a few artists. And then I was, if I'm not mistaken, the only teaching artist who, who won the grant, um, and, and who was awarded the grant. And then because of that grant, um, you know, I was able to work with some young people in the Bronx at a studio called, um, uh, Bragg Bronx rises against gun violence. And we were able to get together and, um, and write songs and, and record music and, you know, so they, they helped to create space for me to do this work that I love and that I find to be really meaningful. Um, so I was super grateful for that, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Oh. But it's also another big knowledge nugget in terms of taking advantage of opportunities, even if you don't feel like you fully qualify. And that one's for like everybody looking for a job even. Like I know for a fact that people wildly be like, Psh, I'm missing this bullet point on this list of qualifications and thus I shall I not think, apply. Um, 